And the whole time the split screen is killing Biden. Yep. Because he's got his mouth open, he looks confused, doesn't know where he is. He's lost his train of thought at least twice in like disastrous shape. Those are gonna be played a billion times in viral video after viral video. So this is an <laughs> epic disaster. It like I see people online saying, well, okay, that answer wasn't so bad. No, it doesn't, any particular answer doesn't matter at all. This thing is over. He looks like he's barely surviving. I don't mean the debate, I mean life. And so there's no person that has a single brain cell left in their head who thinks that Joe Biden is the best candidate to take on Donald Trump. You would have to be even crazier than Donald Trump to think that. This thing is over, over, it's, I'll guarantee you this. I, I would bet any, show me a Democratic politician and I will bet them any amount of money that Joe Biden's going to lose this election if he's the candidate. It's a guaranteed loss. You're telling me this is the most important election of our lifetimes? This is so much worse than my worst nightmares of what it could be like in every way. Uh, the visual stuff is obvious, the staring off, the looking down, it just it looks terrible. His voice is so utterly weak and feeble. And honestly, like that immediately hits you when you see him. But what he says and what he doesn't say on the most important core issues of the election are even worse. Trump won on abortion in the debate. Trump comes out of the January 6th stuff looking fine. He comes out of the criminal conviction stuff looking fine. That Joe Biden looks worse on democracy after that. He looks worse on criminality after that. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I gotta tell you guys, the last 24 hours have been amazing, absolutely amazing. I've enjoyed every second of watching the mainstream liberal media go from oh, Biden's the sharpest he's ever been, and this is a right wing conspiracy to question his mental fitness to oh, Biden definitely is not mentally fit enough to be in office. This guy looks senile and old. We need to replace him, okay? We need to replace him. And it seems as if Joe Biden either hasn't gotten a message yet because he's still on the campaign trail looking old and frail, but at the same time, there's a new twist. They're now so desperate at the Biden's loss that they are rallying behind locking up Trump, right? A lock him up chant broke out at a Joe Biden rally in North Carolina. Here in North Carolina and across America, who are working hard to find a secure place in the middle class. The moms who worry that their daughter. I saw in him then the same character that I see in him today. And even though he has faced unimaginable tragedies, his optimism is undaunted. He's got more trials coming up. Time for that. Wow, wow, so they're saying the quiet part out loud, okay? Joe Biden said, hey, there's time for that as his crowd of lunatics chant to lock Trump up, okay? Lock Trump up, Biden said there's time for that, okay? Now again, doing this same rally, Biden was in the background looking old and senile, okay? Did you guys see his face? Okay, I mean, Biden can't help but to put on the old I'm dying face, okay? I mean, that is his like permanent face right now. That's a problem, right? <laughs> I'm so serious. Biden looks like a corpse. And you got his wife dragging him around. You got his Democrat handlers like Obama dragging him around. It's not a good look. It's not a good look. But of course, again, you have the propagandists in the mainstream of media, like, for example, the cackling hands in the view. They're basically going to defend the indefensible, which is Joe Biden's debate performance. And they seem to be... Uh, having a little meltdown here over Democrats calling for Joe Biden to step aside while at the same time kind of admitting that, yeah, Biden needs to step aside. It's pretty hilarious to watch the cope here. Who is it not? I'm not going to spend all night with you talking about the last 90 minutes well, when I've been watching the last three and a half years of performance. Okay. Mm. So uh, let me ask you, is it even possible to replace Biden at this stage of the game? And have Republicans considered replacing <laughs> their candidate, as Sonny pointed out, with someone who isn't a twice impeached serial liar and a convicted felon? See, here well, we go. More false equivalencies. Oh, well, Republicans should consider replacing Trump. No, the voters have spoken, right? Uh, Trump doesn't need to be replaced. 
Trump is not the one that is having the cognitive issues that, in my opinion, you know, I think is warranted for them to pull the 25th Amendment against Joe Biden. I'm surprised uh, they haven't pulled that cat out of the bag yet. Maybe they will, right? If they get desperate enough and Joe Biden refuses. Maybe they'll do that. I'm not sure. But, but Trump is not the one that needs to be replaced, okay? And there's a reason why nobody's actually talking about that. Nobody's having a conversation about it is because it's not an issue. Clearly, clearly the Republicans have not, right? As Anna just mentioned, yeah. they're, they're not going to do, they're going to fall in line, unlike the Democrats. Um, I liked what I saw from Kamala. I liked what I saw from Gavin. She said he had a slow start, but a strong finish. But I've wow. been watching him for three and a half years, and I know what he can do. With Kamala, uh, the vice president, excuse me, uh, by his side, that gives me great comfort. Uh, with Gavin Newsom as a potential successor, that gives me great comfort. I have no comfort in who would succeed Donald Trump because he has said that he's going to be a dictator from day one. Yeah. So in my view, yeah. if we're going to talk about successors, yes, you may want to talk about a Hakeem Jeffries, yes. the way, you know, you may want to talk about Hakeem, the way Nancy Pelosi looked inside of herself and passed the baton. You may want to do that. You may want to think about Pete Buttigieg, who I'm not sure if this country is ready yeah. for a gay president, but I think he's certainly qualified. And Gavin Newsom, again, qualified, runs as the governor, runs one of the largest economies in the world. But again, I think people think of him as too liberal, don't you? I don't think so. I think he's ready. Um, I think any of those people are ready. But remember, we have Joe Biden and we have the vice president of the United States who looked very strong last she did and i i think what you wow wow you guys just heard a level of delusion that i did not think was possible from the cackling hens okay but they just continue to break the scale and it really kind of blows my mind that these same people like sonny holston will claim that this country is so systemically racist and people like her are victims because she's a woman and half black but yet she gets paid millions of dollars to go on television and to give the stupidest takes imaginable on politics because clearly she has no clue what the hell she's talking about she just said that biden had a strong performance last night again just imagine the level of delusion joy reed is not that delusional guys even joy reed was like yeah well everybody was basically telling me that this is bad right this was not good even Joy Reid, who I thought was one of the most delusional people, if not the most delusional anchor in cable news. Joe Scarborough, who's up there as well, too. Even he was coming out like, ah, eh, well, you know, it wasn't too great, right? It wasn't too great. I'm not sure we should panic, but it wasn't too great. But Sonny Holston fixes her lips and with a straight face going on national television in front of an audience of potentially millions of people and says that Biden had a strong performance, this is a level of delusion I did not think was imaginable. Like, there is no doubt in my mind that Sonny Holster is the most delusional person on cable television. Why does she get paid millions of dollars to just say things that are just not grounded in any reality whatsoever? I don't understand. A preschooler could give a more accurate summary of what happened at that debate and the future of the Democrat Party. Because what she's saying uh, is not grounded in any reality whatsoever, okay? Like, I've been telling you guys since this debate and even before the debate, I was like, Democrats don't have a bench. Democrats are stuck with Joe Biden. I don't even understand why they keep having all these conversations about replacing Joe Biden because they can't replace Joe Biden because of their own uh, actions, right? The fact that they didn't have a primary, they can't replace Joe Biden. They don't have a better option. And guess what? Lo and behold... MSNBC, even MSNBC, Trump deranged MSNBC, pro Biden, they came out and did an analysis basically showing that, yeah, I was right. Biden really does not have anybody that could actually replace him and do better than him in this upcoming election. Take a look. If not Biden, who would it be? And that's where it would get very complicated because the logical place you would look if the president steps aside is. The vice president, Kamala Harris, and hey, she ran for president once. You assume she has presidential ambitions. Here's the issue there. She's very well known, and this is her favorable, unfavorable score in two recent polls. And frankly, compare it to Biden. She's 41 percent favorable in the Fox News poll. In that same poll, Joe Biden was 44 percent. So he's at three points less. In the Economist YouGov poll, uh, same poll, Joe Biden was sitting at 39 percent 
She's at 37 percent. So if you're looking to the vice president, you have to ask yourself, does that actually put you, if you're a Democrat, in a better position politically? And then the question would become, if you say it doesn't, would Kamala Harris also agree to step aside and let a brand new ticket come in? Or is that something she would fight? Would you have complications there? But if you got to that next level and it's not Kamala Harris, then the issue is stature. Who of any stature could you put in who Democrats would agree on to be consensus immediately and maybe who the country knows? And there's not much polling on some of the names that you hear. This was conducted by Ipsos uh, for an interest group earlier this year. And and, uh, there's a lot of names I would like to test, but these are the three that they did test in this poll, just to give you a sense of it. Pete Buttigieg, favorable 30, unfavorable 28. That's still a lot who don't know him. Gavin Newsom, look at that. Almost half the country doesn't have an opinion of him, but those that do, it's already double digits negative. Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, the vast majority, no opinion of her, 17-17 among those who do. And again, there's other names out there you're already probably hearing, like Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, Amy Klobuchar, senator from Minnesota. But this is a sense of the numbers when you get beyond Biden and Harris and those big name national figures you get a lot of people. It's, it's a question mark. You know, you could see Democrats might see potential talent nationally in, say, a Gretchen Whitmer. But that's that's a big question mark. How would she be received by the public? And would that give Democrats pause? And then you start to ask the question, well, OK, is there any Democrat out there who has the kind of national stature and national popularity who could step in and immediately unite the party and be strong against Trump? And yeah, we're looking around for names here. You hear this one a lot. There is absolutely no indication she has any interest. But just to give you a sense, Michelle Obama. The last time we polled her on this question of favorable, unfavorable, now it's been a few years, but it was 57, I'll try to write this down, it was 57% favorable and just 25% unfavorable. So that's the kind of profile just in terms of, you know, widely known, and look at that, much, much more popular, more than twice as uh, popular as unpopular there in the poll. That's the kind of profile the Democrats would probably want in this situation, but beyond Michelle Obama, not sure where you could find that, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, so there's literally nobody except Michelle Obama, apparently, that could step in and give the Democrats a better chance of beating Trump than Joe Biden, right? And this is what I try to tell you guys. It's not going to work, okay? Democrats have screwed themselves. It's Dan if you do, Dan if you don't. Because they chose not to have a primary, a.k.a. they chose to overthrow democracy in their own party. This is why they're stuck in this situation. They are stuck with Joe Biden. They really are. Because there's nobody that they can replace him with that can actually beat Trump. Gavin Newsom is not going to beat Trump, okay? He cannot beat Trump. Why? Because he's already unpopular and he's a guy that people don't even know about. Outside of California, a lot of people don't know who Gavin Newsom is. Nobody knows who Pete Buttigieg is or um, Josh Shapiro or Gretchen Whitmer. Nobody knows who these people are, right? They don't have enough popularity. So, again, they're cooked. Democrats are done okay they're done and they deserve it they deserve it and again you have some people that will acknowledge the reality of it and then you have some people like again sonny holston that will live in fantasy world Kofa coco puffs world and said oh no biden you did a good job biden <laughs> right you did a good job okay even though he did it he was terrible but yeah again this is cope this is being high off copium we saw from both of them last night, uh, from Gavin Newsom and Kamala Harris, who, who are two of the names that get the most mentioned as possible replacements, um, is that they're loyal to Joe Biden. So this entire conversation of replacing Joe Biden, I don't think is feasible unless Joe Biden himself right. decides to, to uh, what about get Jill? out of the... How much influence will Jill have on him? I hope uh, that the people that love him would step in, because I guarantee if that was someone I loved, I'd be up in his ear now. You gave him a chance. He deserved that reverence. He was the incumbent president. He was not primary, but the voters have spoken on Donald Trump. As sad as that is, they have spoken. It would be discounting their votes for anyone to retreat him now. But I think the problem here is... Look at her face, bro. Look at Sunny Holston face. She don't like that, bro. She hate reality. She don't like that. Oh, why did they talk about pulling Trump out? Well, because the voters have already chosen. The voters didn't get an opportunity to choose with Biden. That's actually an amazing point. That's actually a great point from Sarah Hayes. The voters chose with Trump. The voters did not choose with Joe Biden. But yeah, again, Sonny Holston is up here trying to have a conversation about, oh, the GOP, they, they need to get rid of Trump, <laughs> right? 
again, this right here, this is reality hitting you in the face, right? This is the look of reality hitting you in the face. In fact, this is going to be the thumbnail. Okay, it's going to be on the thumbnail, okay? <laughs> because this face right here is glorious. It really is. I think the problem here is even Governor Rick, if they were to pull back on, on, on Biden is different. He wasn't primary. Donald Trump was primary. He had they had other options yeah. and they chose him, and that's very sad. What you no, said, it's not, Sonny, it's not sad, that's democracy. What happened to these people that claim they love democracy so much? Listen to them. When they don't get what they want, when the outcome is not what they want, they say, Oh, it's sad. <laughs> it's sad. Amazing. But you know what's actually uh sad? What's actually sad is that allegedly over half the country voted for Joe Biden, the guy that's currently in office, even though he was showing signs of decline during the Democrat primary in 2020. That's what's actually really sad, okay? That's what's sad. ...about the reason you'd vote for him, like I know three and a half years, that's what all of us who would vote for him would say. The problem here are those people that are wavering, that are dissatisfied, that are unhappy. Don't say, don't look at that debate. No, that's not, it, that is not helpful. And well, at this point, at if the, the Democratic it. voice pieces do not pivot, but it's, they will look at lose it in November. November. Look at the but again, this isn't, look at all of that. But again, wow. this isn't about decided voters. This is the undecided voters who will determine this election. I don't know people under 30 who are going to turn out for either candidate after last night. I was here hearing from people who are horrified. They were embarrassed by it. It got into like their golf handicaps and this like pissing match between oct octogenarians. It's not right. It's beneath this as a, a nation. And listen, Joe Biden is a good man. I think he loves this country. I think I he's a patriot. I think he's not a the felon. history books will remember him well if he passes the baton. If he stays in and he will lose to Donald Trump, he is losing in every battleground poll. Give it two weeks till people process this debate. He will be plummeting. You know, he risks turning this country over to Donald Trump. These people who are like sitting on the fence or something or, or real all in for Trump. I'm fascinated by that. You know, it's almost like... You know what I'm actually fascinated by is people like you. Actually, I'm not, because I know why people like you exist, okay? You are an actor, right? This is an act, okay? This isn't real. Maybe it is real, but regardless, what I don't understand is how anybody who watched that debate can come out and claim that Biden had a strong performance, which is what your colleague just did, or anybody who was quote-unquote on the fence who watched that debate and come out of it saying, well, I'm still undecided or that I'm going to vote for Biden. That is what I don't get, right? That is impossible to me. No, you know when you're a, a woman and you're dating, so you have a really nice guy who takes your, holds your pocketbook <laughs> while you're shopping, yeah. you know, or, or like really treats you well, and you, you're bored with him. And you got this the other on the one motorcycle. who's a convicted felon on a motorcycle, yeah. you're hot for him. Yeah. He's the guy, yeah. you know? That's where and who grabs you by the hoo-ha without your consent. Exactly. But have you seen? Listen, have you seen? Yeah, and again, Joe Biden has Me Too allegations that, again, they never talk about. They never want to bring that up. It's amazing. There were photographs of Trump supporters, and one of them said, you can grab me by the mm, -mm anytime, Donald. Listen, I would, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly this is the okay with Donald Trump grabbing her by the hoo-ha. I'm not okay by, with Donald Trump grabbing the United States of America. Thank you. Our yes. uh, again, the delusion is fascinating. It really should be studied, okay? Um, I'm not sure how you go from talking about Biden's performance and Democrats wanted to get rid of Biden. How do you go from that to talking about the whole grabbing by the you know what? Again, it's just Trump derangement, right? And unfortunately, there's so much of it in this country that you have these people who get paid millions of dollars to give honest analysis, right? And you would think the analysis would be reasonable and founded on logic and, and you know, facts, but they don't, right? It's nothing but emotions and just hatred for Trump. And this is how you get these types of clips, right? Where you have Sonny Holston claiming that Biden had a strong performance when it's just like, you're just not seeing reality, right? I'm not sure how anybody can find you to be a credible individual. But again, a lot of people already proved that they weren't credible when they told us, they gaslighted us into believing that Biden was okay leading up into this debate. And now that they can't deny reality, again, unless you're a Sonny Holston, uh, that is, they're telling you that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Biden is, uh, he's not mentally capable of being president of the United States and uh, he needs to be replaced. However, unfortunately for Democrats, that is, um, I don't think they can replace Joe Biden. I think they're stuck with him. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.